Very, very easy job to do. Some of the tools you're gonna need are 14 millimeter wrench. Got a 14 millimeter wrench here. Picked this up from Harbor Freight. Awesome little set. 14 millimeter, you get the uh, caliper slide bolts out. You're also gonna need this special tool for getting the uh, caliper pistons back into place. Uh, you, you go uh, clockwise to get them back in. You need some brake cleaner, O'Reilly's brake cleaner. Some Permatex silicone ceramic brake lubricant. You're gonna need a good set of brake pads. I got these from uh, O'Reilly's. And then a uh, 21 millimeter uh, lug nut or uh, socket I should say to get the lug nuts off. Just opening up the uh, package of the uh, brake pads to take a look at the new ones compared to the old ones. You're gonna see how much brake pad material is actually gone from the old one. So there's the old one. See, it's really thin, really thin right there. New one, it's nice and thick. So they were uh, complaining of squeaking. And don't touch them. Don't get your greasy paws all over the surface of the brake pad. Right there, I'm just taking the wheel off um, using my Milwaukee half-inch gun. I'll put a link in the description below where you can pick one up on Amazon. I love that gun. Didn't think I would, but I do. So right here, there's the brake caliper. Here's the uh, brake pad. Um, and then on the back, you have the caliper slide pins. 14 millimeter there, 14 millimeter there. That's what you take off to get the uh, brake caliper off and out of the way and access to the brake pads. So these shouldn't be too tight, just, uh, you know, breaking them loose. I'm not going to show you the other side. This is actually the driver's side, rear. So I'm not going to show you the other side. It's exactly the same as the uh, driver's side. But yeah, 14 millimeter bolt, just take them out. They're exactly the same, so you don't have to worry about that at all. The unique thing about this brake caliper piston is that you actually have to turn it to get it back, um, get, get it back to factory reset because you have to make room for the new uh, brake pad material like I showed you earlier. So the thicker the brake pad, um, you have to push the piston back in to accommodate for that new room of the uh, material on the brake pad. And the way you do that is you take that special tool, which I'll put a link in the description below, of where you just, um, where you just uh, go clockwise to get it back into the uh, brake caliper. And you have to have the emergency brake, brake off or you won't be able to get that caliper off. There's one of the side slide pins. You can see it has a rubber on it. And then uh, the other slide pin doesn't. I'll put a link in the description below where I go over the uh, theory of uh, rubber on your caliper brake pin. Most of the time I just rip it off. Sometimes I'll leave it on. So you can see on the bottom one, um, there's a rubber piece on it. Just removing the uh, old brake pads. Typically you can do it by hand, sometimes you need some help, so you, I just grabbed the 14 uh, millimeter wrench, pried it behind or between the brake pad material and the rotor, got it loose that way. Got it out. Okay, so there's the uh, brake caliper piston. That's what I've been talking about. You have to uh, turn that clockwise to get it back into the uh, brake caliper. There's a special tool that you need. Just reminds me of the cube from Hellraiser. So just have a 3 8 extension on a 3 8 ratchet. The cool thing about the tool is you just it has different options or for the different kind of uh, pistons you might encounter. So you can just switch it around or move it around, flip it around to uh, get the one that you need. The two holes that you see there are probably the most common um, application. I have just two holes on the outside that are 180 from each other. So just take your time, make sure it's recessed all the way back into the brake caliper, make sure the piston is recessed. If you go to put the um, brake caliper on and it's not going on for some reason, double check and make sure that the piston is pushed all the way in because if it's not, you're not going to get the caliper on. Okay, so there are the side pins. Just taking some um, brake, brake parts cleaner, spraying them down, getting all the uh, old uh, brake grease off. Then I'll uh, apply some new Permatex. I'll put a link in the description below where you can pick up the uh, Permatex, that Permatex um, on Amazon. 
So all you do is put a light coating onto the pin and uh, put it back into the uh, hole and make sure that it uh, that it moves freely within the uh, into, within the brake caliper bracket make sure it moves pretty freely if you if you need to and you need to if you feel some resistance in there go ahead and spray some uh, brake parts cleaner in there and just clean it out because it might be rust I've also seen where the caliper pins are really really rusted and you can take them to a wire wheel get that rust off and clean it up But yeah, not a lot to it. Just apply that. Okay, so right here I'm just taking my finger. I'm applying um, the grease to the slide points. Basically the ears of the brake pad slide on this. And you want it to be nice and, uh, and lubed so that the brake pads uh, move freely within that. Don't get the uh, grease on the rotor. If you do, spray it off with brake cleaner, but don't, don't, glop, don't goop it up on there. Just put a light coating. So right here, I'm just uh, putting the uh, bolts back into the slide pins. And I'll just tighten it up by hand. Not a big deal. Also, another thing I'll show at the very end, but you want to, after you do this job on both sides, make sure that you uh, press your brake pedal before starting the engine or starting the car before you go anywhere. Make sure you um, press the uh, brake, pa brake pad or brake pedal 10 times before you go anywhere. And then make sure you um, move your um, emergency brake up and down four or five times so that uh, you know it's working correctly. So just bring in the uh, 14 millimeter wrench back in there and uh, tighten them, tightening, tightening them up. Yeah, I can talk tonight. It's late right now and... Uh, Trying to do this voiceover for you guys. So not a whole lot to this brake job. Um, just putting the wheel back on. I would put, I would uh, use a torque wrench on this, anywhere from 80 to 100 pounds. Go in a star pattern like a pentagram. You'll see me do that here in a second, where I go around and um, tighten them up that way. It's best if you start with the uh, very bottom lug nut to keep the wheel in place. Just tighten it up. So see right there, I'm putting the uh, very bottom uh, lug nut onto the stud. Then I'll just zap it on real quick so that the wheel stays in place and doesn't wobble around on me when I put the other lug nuts on. That's the only reason I do that. So I'll actually go around, put all the lug nuts, start all lug nuts on by hand. Always do that. And then uh, go around in a star pattern. Tighten them up that way. And then I'll lower the car down so that the wheel is actually on the concrete. And I'll make sure that each one is tight uh, going around in a circle. The star pattern lets it uh, lets the wheel rim sit onto the rotor evenly or as evenly as possible. So you see how it kind of spun on me and I'm holding it by hand. Once you get it on the ground, you go around, make sure that they're all tight and, uh, and that your wheel won't fall off. So there's a star pattern I'm doing. But yeah, anybody can do this job. Just make sure you get a quality brake, brake pad. Just double check that your uh, e-brake is working correctly and then uh, press your brake pedal 10 times. And then check your uh, fluid in your uh, brake, brake fluid reservoir um, inside the engine compartment. Under your hood, I should say. So there you go. This job wasn't hard at all. Um, hopefully it helped you guys out. If you can, subscribe to Bunny's Garage and uh, I will uh, see you guys later. Okay, real quick, after you do the job, you want to go ahead and check your brake fluid reservoir. You want to make sure that that's topped off. Um, another thing to note is if uh, you go in here and you start checking all your fluids and you notice that your uh, brake fluid reservoir is uh, low, that's a good indication that uh, either the front or the rear brake pads are low. So you want to go ahead, if you see a, a, um, a low level on your brake fluid reservoir, go ahead, pop your wheels off, see, um, see what the level is of your brake pads or shoes if you have shoes in the back so um, don't just add brake fluid if the fluid is low you need to find out where it's going or if it's leaking somewhere it's always a good idea to check out um, make sure the system is uh, closed it's a closed system and nothing's leaking because you don't want to mess up or 
you know, compromise your life by having a uh, leaking um, brake hydraulic system. But uh, after you do the job, go ahead and top off the fluid if it doesn't come up back to where it should be, because as you push the, push the piston back, it will force fluid, it will force the fluid, the brake fluid back up into the reservoir and should make the fluid level um, within the reservoir itself. Um, but if it's not, go ahead and top it off with uh, whatever recommended fluid um, the manufacturer is, is calling for, be that .3 or four. You can use dot four and dot three applications, but you can't go the other way. You can't use dot three brake fluid and dot four um, applications. So just keep note of that. So there you go, guys. Just a just a quick tip on uh, brake fluid reservoir.